what I did, this is my watering hole that I've been using for the last couple years. And what I would do is just come down here, set my well pump right here inside of a bucket and suspend it off of that stump over there and bring the generator down here and use the generator to operate this pump. That gets kind of costly. I can't generate electricity as cheap as the uh, power company can. So this year what I'm doing, running 320 some odd foot of wire from the house down here to the creek. And I'm gonna suspend this pump right here by this uh, galvanized pole that I put in the ground. So I took the back bucket, dug this hole out about that much more deeper down to some more solid ground. So I got a good, about that much water in here. Then I take the, uh, the front bucket and use it for the platform so I can get to this thing. Uh, I'm not real keen on getting down in this murky stuff right here. All kinds of creepy crawlers down in here. That's another reason I'd like to do this by, the, uh, by current electricity. Running from the house where I can just go outside and flip the brake or flip a switch as opposed to coming down here at 10 o'clock at night with a flashlight and trying to see my way around. That's a kind of uncomfortable feeling. That thing is in there pretty solid. What I'm gonna do, got a rope right here, this little hickory. I'll come across it like this, tie it there, and go to the old stump on that side. That way, any vibration in this thing, any kind of pressure on the line, but keep it fairly uh, fairly stable. I think it's sitting down there on some pretty solid ground right now, so it should be okay. Now I just need to get my pump put in place. These things got a little uh, ring right here where you usually uh, you put a rope around it. And what I'm gonna do is fix it so I can suspend it from here and just drop it right down in there. It'll be like about so. I don't know if you can see now how deep the water is. Come up to about right here. That's plenty of water for me to be pumping the garden. I think I'm ready to go now. Got everything wired up, taped real good. Tape secured to the pipe, tied up real good. Once I pull the backhoe out of the way, I'll tighten up this rope on the other side. So this post ought to stay here nice and uh, nice and sturdy. I got it uh, temporarily wired already up the hill. We'll go see if we can get some water up there. And this is the hill I have to go up. It's about 200 foot going straight uphill there. What I'm going to do is put this uh, wire inside some conduit and just let it lay on top of the ground. I'm not going to try to bury it coming down here. And once I get up into the yard, yeah, then I got to do that a little bit more cleaner. Put that on the ground. And if I had a situation where I didn't have electricity, didn't have gas, any way to pump the water, it would be a right hard uh, trek back and forth up and down this hill with five gallon buckets coming out of the creek. But if it came down to a choice between eating or toting water, I believe I could tote that water. I think anybody else would do the same. All right, this post right here is uh, from a clothesline in the backyard. It's about 55 foot from the house. Everything is just temporary just to make sure this thing will work. And then I'll, when I get a chance, I'll come back and bury it all. Right now, I just need to get some water to the garden. So it's gonna be simple as, instead of going down to the creek, cranking up the generator, putting gas in it, checking the oil, uh, looking for snakes. I'll be able to come out here, flip a switch, and my water's running. That's good pressure right there. I can run um, eight, nine hundred, a thousand foot of that inch and a quarter pipe all over this property and get water just about anywhere I need to. This is gonna work out a whole lot better and trying to mess with that generator. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill up this reservoir right here. This one of my IBC containers that I got last year that had the uh, red ink inside of it, the red dye. I've scrubbed it out real good and got it, you know, so it would start running clean, clear water on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with the creek water and then go ahead and put my pump in there. So I get that reservoir filled up and what I did yesterday before I did this, 
I tested it out. Anytime you're going to do something new, uh, before you put a lot of time and effort into it, make you a test first to see if it's worth the effort. So inside this barrel, what I done yesterday, I put a 1 6 horsepower utility pump inside that barrel, put some water in it, and hooked it up to my T-tape out here to see how it would do. And that's just fine to run about 10 PSI out here and keep this T-tape going. Alright, so what I've done now is drop that pump down inside this reservoir. And what I did, I had to go and cut me a bigger hole in the top of this thing so I could get my brush down in there and try to scrub this out. But I put this uh, conduit elbow on here as the, uh, the water hose is coming out to keep this thing from uh, collapsing and crinkling. That'll keep it nice and round while it comes on out to the ground. Right here is the start of the, uh, the line going to my T-tape. Got a 10 PSI regulator. I'm going to put me a filter on this side of it over here to uh, try to screen some of this stuff out. And uh, then just hook my water hose up to it. I'm right here beside the greenhouse where I can just uh, run a drop cord to that little utility pump and use that to pump into the garden out here. I've got my lines run down up under the tomatoes right there. Then over here where the cucumbers are, you can see the tape laying there on the ground. And you can also see where it's a little bit moist down there. I've been uh, watering this out of the well the last, uh, for the last week or so, trying to get some water up under there. And you're talking about a good, uh, efficient way to water. Uh, this tea tape, it comes out so slow that there is no wasted water. Everything sinks right in the middle of the road. There ain't nothing wasted about this stuff whatsoever. Cucumbers looking pretty good out here. Alright, so while that container's filling up, what I gotta do is run this black line right here, coming on down this way, and get me a sprinkler set up in this garden down here. And get it in position where I can water it later this evening. The sun's uh, got on up right now, and you don't ever do any overhead watering while the sun is shining on this stuff. Get it first thing in the morning or late in the evening. Alright, the reservoir is full. It took 18 minutes to fill up that 250 uh, plus gallons in that thing right there. That's not bad at all. Now what I'm going to do is this outside row where I got some peppers and uh, several different varieties of tomatoes that I, I didn't give them as much attention to as far as Cajun goes. Uh, I'm going to take this big black pipe and go down there and uh, soak everything real good up under the bottom. Now this is what you call a water hose. I'm in the process of emptying that uh, IBC container for the third time. It's got about 50 gallons to go in the bottom. So that'll be somewhere 650, 700 gallons of water that's been put on this garden today. And you couldn't even tell it by looking at it. You never know anybody watered it. So where did all the water go? Out here on this outside edge of the road, this ground is just hard as a rock. You come up in here where the water's been dripping nice and slow. Been dripping real easy most of the day. See how nice and moist that is? That's the beauty of drip tape. Uh, something that's going to come out real slow and soak in the ground by the roots instead of running off feeding all the uh, weeds and stuff down the side of the row, running off the row and running out the ends. I've tried soaker hoses and the problem with them is they are so uneven. There'll be one long section where I get nothing and then another section where it's like you just open the spigot all at one time and floods everything. This, this tea tape right here works real good. Now we've got a little bit of shade starting to creep over this garden right here. Sun's starting to head on down in the west. It's time to go flip a switch and get some water going out here. That right there is a beautiful sight. I tell you what. The first beans are already on there. Plenty more blooms, and those things really needed some water. I 
I've been using this for a week now and I gotta tell you, this is so much simpler to work with. Just come out here, open this up, flip the breaker, pump's running, watering the corn down there. That's what I like. I've got my line already uh, trenched up on the ground, got it cleaned up, looking good right now. And you can see what I've done now. After I got out of the backyard, coming down this path, I just left the conduit laying on top of the ground. Should be just fine. Back down here at the creek, the water's cleared up pretty good, not too bad. And when I took the uh, filter apart uh, a few days ago, I noticed it kind of had a twang to it. Smell real fishy-like. A lot of people that told me, you know, I need to get into aquaponics and stuff like that. Uh, run the fish water through your plants and get all the nitrates and stuff out of it. Feed the, uh, feed the plants. Well, we're kind of doing the aquaponics on a mega scale right here. We're going to use the creek. There's a lot of fish in here. We'll just uh, pump the nitrates and stuff out of this, pump it up to the garden, and do it that way. Sound like a plan to me. Something to keep in mind on this well pump right here, it is not a trash pump. It's not made to be set down on the bottom of the creek, pond, or whatever, and just start pumping back up to wherever your garden is or whatever you need the water for. It's made for fairly clean water. Get it suspended up off the bottom, and it should be just fine. It's no different than what you see at the lake. Anytime you go to the lake and the water's way down, and you go around and look at all the boat docks, a lot of them will have a submersible well pump strapped to the pilings. And they're using that to pump the fresh water from the lake, pond, whatever it is, back up to the house where they can have fresh water in the backyard. A lot of times probably going to clean fish or, you know, the hose off the boats or whatever, stuff like that. This is only a half horse pump. These things are very strong. They're made for vertical lift of, you know, three, four, five hundred foot, uh, that kind of thing. So if it will pick up water, you know, 300 foot vertically, uh, going just a few feet vertical and then going horizontal is not a problem whatsoever. It'll push water a long ways. If you got a creek or a pond somewhere that's, you know, seven, eight hundred foot from the garden, this is the way to go right here. Get you some electricity to it, flip that switch, and life is a whole lot easier. What would really be nice is if I had a bank of solar panels and batteries where I could set them up in the backyard there and let them charge all the batteries and if the power went out, just flip it over to that, uh, the solar setup and keep the pump running. That's something that requires a fair amount of money, so uh, I'm gonna have to put it on my list and gradually let it work on up. Back to the T-tape up here. I said I was gonna put a uh, filter on this. I think this is a 200 micron and it's got a stainless steel screen inside of it. This is what you want to put if you're pumping out of some dirty water. If you're pumping from your well or something like that, it's probably not quite as big a deal. But if you're going to be pumping somewhat semi-dirty uh, water, you need to put you a good filter on there. This has got a stainless steel screen inside of it. And what I can do, basically, every time I empty this reservoir, I clean this screen out. Keeps, every, keeps the little stuff from getting inside your T-tape and clogging up the holes in there. And yeah, she smells kind of fishy, but that's a good thing right now. Real simple to work with. And you talk about some tomatoes getting loaded up. Look at these things right here. This is some of those big beef. Look at the tomatoes on that bad boy. All right, guys, I think I'm pretty well set now. One of the uh, critical variables in gardening outside is always uh, water, being able to water and deal with drought. I now have a way that I can water anything out here at just about any time. There's a couple of good springs down in that bottom where that creek is going to stay full uh, just about all the time. I may pump it down a few inches or so, give or take, but it won't take it long to, uh, to backfill. The flip side of it is having a situation where you just have too much water. Up here on the hill like I am, that's not an issue. Even down in the bottom where my corn's at, that stuff dries out so fast. I don't have any flat land up here that's going to be holding water. So my biggest concern is always being able to get the water. Now I've got the flip of a switch, run my sprinklers. I can put T-tape anywhere I want to. I should be in real good shape. I feel pretty good about it anyways. Actually, I feel very good about it. So y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.